Samsung QDOLED OLED S95D is the star of today's video. Up next. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brian, this is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for watching. Today's video is on the Samsung S95D QD OLED. Now we saw this display at CES and there was much said about its matte finish, especially by me. I had hands-on time at Samsung headquarters and was able to record as much footage as I wanted in both streaming and gaming. Have I changed my mind on the matte finish? Stay tuned to find out. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, let's do it. Samsung S95D QD OLED 65 inches filmed at Samsung's headquarters. We'll take a quick walk around the S95D, show you the design and the One Connect box. We have a very minimal black bezel, black stand. Looks like the display is hovering. Awesome design, love the center stand from Samsung. You have the one connect box. You love how the stand actually angles back, but you can also bring it closer to the end or the edge of the table if you like. A lot of the conversation will be about the anti-glare or OLED glare-free technology, and many of us have referred this as matte. We'll talk about it as we go through the design, let you guys look at that. Now, I was very opposed to the matte finish when I saw it at CES. Has today, or at least my time with the S95D, changed my mind? Yes and no. We'll go through the particulars of that in this video. Now, as the first demo material starts, I want you to know that the TV is on. The demo is starting and the screen is absolutely black which I think is absolutely amazing because it's not really matte in terms of being semi-matte or glossy. It's almost like a fabric. And it actually looks very high-end because the screen looks perfectly uniformed. Coming out of black, starting, you didn't see any lifted blacks, no hesitation. But the room that I'm in now has lights behind me and lights above me. So I wouldn't say it's very bright. It's like a well-lit living room. And this is where the S95D will really shine. And also where I think it'll really excel is in a showroom such as a Best Buy or even a Costco. It will fight off those glares that trouble WRGB OLEDs and glossy screens. It will look 10 times better than those TVs. Now I can't wait to see it where I'm gonna see the 77 inch in a few days at Value Electronics, that'll sit in the sunshine. Cannot wait to see how this um, anti-coating, glare coating behaves in the sunlight. We will chat about the screen a little bit more in a little bit. Now our processor is the NQ4 AI Gen 2 processor. We're also capable of 144 Hertz gaming, new game bar, gorgeous TV. Big fan of QD OLED. Now quickly when you see the screen here, there's some footage where my camera will pick up what seems to be the screen. It is not visible in person, but I wanted to show you that in case you decide to film the TV yourself, that is not in, uh, in person. It was only on camera. Jumping to a very dark room. Remember, I'm at Samsung's headquarters. Um, I was able to really control the room I was in. Pitch black. And it's gorgeous. Now, I did not notice any lifted blacks when the lights went down. So that fear that I had seeing it um, compared to a WRGB OLED at CES, are it's gone. In a vacuum by itself, it looks very much like a very bright OLED. Huge fan of Samsung display. This is a third gen panel. Now this is a very tough demo I'm gonna move into next and it's gonna appear very cool on camera. It does not appear that way in person. But this is usually a very hard demo for mini LEDs because of local dimming. The test here is to see how the QD OLED handles white and would it bloom? 
and it does not. It looks absolutely amazing, both in light and in dark. So no fears there. There is one instance where I did have the star field up and the very small details did behave like a mini LED. You did not see the stars sparkle the same way as a regular QD OLED or WRGB OLED. So that's one thing to know. It didn't look like it was blooming, but it wasn't as tack sharp per pixel um, as you've seen star fields where they actually, you know, they shimmer a little bit. That's the only time that I noticed that the coating was a little bit of an issue. Running through the settings, keep in mind that my camera is just there. I'm not lowering anything. You can see how bright the room is around me. No reflections at all on the screen. Now, what does that do for the screen? Well, when in a room like this, it's literally leaping off the screen. It is so deep, it's gorgeous. And it actually still looks very quality, even when the TV is off. Now we've talked about matte screens as you see me going through the different picture settings. You guys can see that more than me explaining them. When you see the screen off, you would imagine that it looks very cheap because matte screens tend to look very cheap. Not so. The S95D looks very premium because of the design, but the fact that the screen is completely black, it actually looks very premium, surprisingly enough. It certainly doesn't look like a mirror. Now, my prediction is that the S95D will be a good deal better than the S90D. I'm only saying that simply because the 900D, um, the QN900D Neo QLED is a clear step above its 90 um, QN90 Neo QLED 4K model this year. I feel like Samsung is really pushing their flagships apart where the S90C and the S95C last year were very close. I don't think you're gonna see that this year. I feel the S95, again, I haven't seen the S90 myself. I think the S95 will be a clear step above. I saw the S90 at CES. But think about what I'm saying and think about what you're seeing. That matte finish, which isn't the right term for it, OLED glare-free technology, it says on their paper, um, this exact light situation, it is unreal. I mean, you don't see any glare at all. And as I'm filming this, or I should say, as I'm narrating this, I'm looking at my own WRGB OLED in a just well-lit room, and you can see lights everywhere on it. So in terms of it being successful, it's a home run. I think it'll sell a ton of models, especially uh, when you see them in store. They will stand out over everything, even very bright LEDs. Now, to be clear, the QD OLED does not bloom. There is no blooming. Though I would say several times in person in those little instances of star fields, it did appear that they weren't quite as, again, sharp as they would be in a standard uh, screen of an OLED or WRGB OLED or QD OLED. Shadow detail is on point. Specular highlights are there. I feel like the, again, I'm not measuring it. The QD OLED third generation, I know how bright the TV can get or the technology can get. The S95D seems very bright, very saturated, very vibrant, gorgeous TV. Now, again, in a vacuum, judging it alone without another WRGB OLED next to it or even another QD OLED, next to it, it's easily a recommend, even with this screen. And that's me not being a fan of it. It started to convert me little by little. Now keep in mind guys, I was there for nine hours and I divided that time between a couple TVs. I spent most of my time with the uh, 8K 900D, please check out that video, and also the S95D. Again, I'll be at Value Electronics in a few days filming the 77 inch. I will be doing all sizes this year as last year 77 inch was brighter than the 65 inch offerings of the S95C and S90C. So by itself here in a room that it was designed for, even in a pitch black room, there are no raised blacks that I can see. Look how inky and beautiful that image is. Remember, it's a quantum dot OLED. 
processing is on point. 144 hertz of gaming. And there you see it, a little bit of the screen looking a little haloed. So you see me with the light behind me, I'm not flashing a light directly on it, but you could see it there. And at that point, it can look a little gray. Now, seeing the um, S95D at CES with a very bright light on it, it did fade the image a bit. Now, a WRGB OLED next to it was a mirror. So their thought is, even if bright light hits it, you'll still be able to see the entire image. That's when the blacks will raise. However, instead of fading like the other QD OLEDs of the past, the image will be intact. You won't lose it. You'll see it. There'll be no refraction. There'll be no jagged on it. It'll look solid. Look how gorgeous that image is. Very sharp, very clean. Pausing it here, staying still, turning the light on, you can see it barely changes the image at all. And again, this is the kind of room you'll probably be watching in. No halo at all. And you can tell there's no tricks of the camera. The room is staying the exact same light. There's your lights. It is so unreal, it looks fake, which is very cool. If you're into technology, it looks like a decal. So there is that three-dimensional pop that we talk about. But what I love about it is the black, um, the way the black looks. It looks like it's even blacker in some areas. Now, when we did transition there, you did see a very slight halo. Very, very slight. I love using this demo here simply because it's vivid. We're able to go into these vivid presets, show you guys which would be actually dynamic with Samsung. Accuracy is great. I love to travel the presets for you guys, both in um, movie watching, streaming, and in gaming, which you'll see shortly. What I love about the QD OLEDs from Samsung and Samsung in general, again, flexibility of image. The ability to change the dynamic tone mapping. You can make the image look as accurate or as punchy as you like. That's always been Samsung's strength. Now that they're into OLEDs, both WRGB and QD OLED, that's a step further as processing does not get disabled for any reason. Which is why the QD OLEDs are among the best gaming displays on the market now, even in monitors. Now, the important thing about sitting with these TVs for as long as I have, even on this first look, other than CES, is spending two, three hours with them. Now, Samsung had nothing to say in terms of what I should say or steer away from this. I have the remote. I was able to bring my own content, my own movies. Obviously, I can't show you movies, but these are all my demos that I brought with me. I know how they look on everything. Very hard demo for an LED. No problems, no raised blacks on the Quantum Dot OLED. You might say, why am I bringing up raised blacks? It's that finish that everybody was worried about. I will say though, if you're concerned about it, you'll see a comparison very soon against the leading MLA OLEDs and we'll see how they do. I have a feeling it'll do great as long as we're not shining a bright light on it. Now where that'll be interesting is the other OLED will be a mirror and then you may see some raised blacks on the QD OLED S95D, but which is, what would you want? A little bit of raised blacks in a bright room or a mirror? When the lights are off, they seem equal, but when the lights are on like a regular living room, it's untouchable. Nothing can touch it. Motion handling is superb. And throughout these demos, I'm jumping into filmmaker mode is what you're going to see in this next demo here. But super impressed with it. And I can feel myself being converted throughout the day with this finish. Now, would I buy it personally? 
There's so much competition, I'm not willing to sacrifice any black level. I'll have to see how it does versus another leading display in a bright room and then in a dark room. However, I do feel the delta between the S90 and the S95 will be greater this year. I have no information on that. It's just a guess. So what I'm saying to you is last year, many of you chose the S90 over the S95 because of the One Connect box. I don't think you're going to want to do that here. Now, this magenta kind of purple tone, again, this is just my camera. I'm in standard game mode, which is really cool in, in color temperature. But we're here looking at Horizon Forbidden West. I'll run you through the new game bar. It's the same game bar, but this is a game bar 4.0. And on PC, once I get a sample home, I will do 144 hertz gaming on it for you, and I will look for any kinds of dropouts. Samsung's greatest strength with their game bar, I think they even surpass LG here, is how many presets you get and how different they can look, and then you can save your own custom. I use this all the time. There are certain games you wanna make them look more realistic. Think of Gran Turismo, think of a driving game. Then think of a game like Horizon Zero Dawn. We want to look more natural, director's intent, or poppy and saturated. With mini LEDs, a lot of times you actually lose that ability to alter the image. Not so here. The strength of the QD OLEDs from Samsung Display with Samsung has always been screen uniformity. No banding that you see on WRGB OLEDs. That continues here, and I would argue with the matte screen, there is no banding or screen or friendly problems at all. Other than that ribbed look that you saw, that curved look that you saw, that was just the camera grabbing the screen, that wasn't visible in person. Screen uniformity, absolutely perfect, and there's not a WRGB OLED that can actually say that. Samsung is leading the way in terms of gaming, both with LG. They do trade shots back and forth, but their game bar is more elaborate. There are more choices. I like the way it's spread out across the entire TV. Look how clean that is. Now I will turn the lights on so you can see how the game behaves in a more brightly lit room, but I think that's gonna be the selling point. I keep alluding back to that. That's going to be the selling point of this TV. Is when you walk in again into a Best Buy or Costco or wherever it's gonna be, those fluorescent lights aren't gonna do anything to this. It's gonna pop from across the store. OLEDs already do that, but the problem is the reflection handling of them makes people say, look, I, I, don't, I, I don't like this. LEDs win there. This is gonna beat everything in store on display. Now, for an enthusiast, an LG or WRGB or OLED enthusiast, you might struggle with QD OLEDs having this finish. But for most people, I think it's going to be something that everybody is going to want to buy. I think it's going to sell a ton of units, much like the frame. Though, I will tell you, knowing the frame pretty intimately, um, it looks nothing like the frame. I mean, not even a little bit. Contrast ratio does not seem compromised at all. Any motion issues you see with her movement is the camera, not the actual display. Lights go on, nothing raises, as you can see. And that's pretty impressive. Again, my um, OLEDs that I have that are glossy, it's not just sunlight, it's regular light that reflects, that can be distracting. I typically don't have a big issue with it, but I'll tell you, sitting here looking at my OLED while I actually narrate this, you can see the attraction and why it's such an important feature that I think is gonna sell a lot of TVs. The question for you guys as enthusiasts, are you gonna make that decision? Now, as far as it a buy, it is the flagship S95D One Connect box, 144 hertz. It does stand alone. The S90D, I think, will be a step behind. 
Again, I have nothing to go on other than what my thoughts would be or what I'm guessing. Third gen panel from Samsung Display, very bright, very saturated, a lot of flexibility of image, perfect screen uniformity. And I think as far as the anti-glare coating, I think you guys will get very used to it. Other than the, maybe the one or two star field scenes that might put you off, it's a win. Because the contrast ratio is still off the charts. Now this is a first look. In a few days, I will be again in New York at Roberts Value Electronics filming the 77 inch. And that will be in the sunlight. We'll see how that actually behaves. It'll be very interesting to see. But from what you see here, it looks gorgeous. Now at the end of this video, what are your thoughts? A lot of controversy. Many of you were excited about the matte screen. I will say that I have definitely warmed up to it. More than really liking it, I gotta tell you, I'm absolutely impressed with the actual technology. It's not just matte, that's, that's the wrong description of it. But what it actually accomplishes is absolutely amazing. As far as from a technical standpoint, what it accomplishes is unreal. You may see all their TVs have this screen at some point. Turning the lights on doesn't change it, doesn't lift it. But even shining a light right on it it may lift it, but you still see the image where on a glossy OLED, you'll just see light. You won't see anything. Instant pixel response, micro contrast on point. Absolutely stunning. All right, guys, I am Brian. This is Tech Therapy again at Samsung HQ with a hands-on look at the S95D QD OLED. Absolute win. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please consider liking and subscribing. Take care. Love you guys.